Hello, welcome back to Traverse Music. We are doing our Stumac build. If you haven't seen our previous videos, what we've done is basically opened the box. We have checked out all the components. We have done fret work. We have done work on the neck. We prepped the body to paint it. We painted the body. We even put our finishing coat on it. You can see we got some bumpiness going on. This is all normal stuff. And now we have to make this clear coat look like a factory finish, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back from our awesome intro. We have our body clear coated, as we stated before, and this clear coat isn't how my clear coats normally turn out. I've been doing clear coats for quite some time at this point. Normally I get a much smoother finish than what we're seeing here. So as you can see from this top-down camera, and if you're wondering, hey, is that guitar changing colors? It is. If you haven't watched before, we actually have a color changing paint on here. So it's going to be purple or blue, depending on how you're looking at it. So as you can see on the back, we have all this weird, not bubbly, but what they call orange peel, because it actually kind of feels like the peel of an orange. And you can see here, especially in this light, how we have... It's not a super smooth finish, and that's totally normal for most people, especially on your first try. What I want to show you on the side here is how we barely have any of that. That's actually crazy smooth. So what I did is a lot of times on your first paint job, when you put your clear coat on, this is the finish you're getting. So I made sure that I got an orange peel kind of finish so that we can sand it properly because this is what most people are getting in their first, second, third, eighth time. Most people aren't spraying that crystal clear, smooth, awesome finish. But I didn't want to have to do the whole guitar, so I did the sides nice and smooth so I don't have to worry about that. We are going to be using some very, very, very fine sandpaper. When most people think of fine sandpaper, they think of 320 grit, right? No. We're not even starting below 1,000. Um, what I'm going to do for this top is start at 1,000. We're also going to be wet sanding it. So I have a bowl of warm, soapy water. And then I have some 1,000 grit paper, some 1,200 grit paper, some 2,000 grit paper. That's as high as I think we need to go for this guitar. If you want to go higher or lower, go for it. That's totally fine. But even the 1,000 grit... This I'm even scared to use on this sometimes. But if we have soapy warm water, which you, you can kind of see some of the bubbles in here. Um, there's not a ton of soap. It's just Dawn dish soap. We're going to put a piece of that in there, let it soak in there for a little bit. We're going to use a straight edge to sand with, not our fingers. And then we're just going to slowly sand all this stuff down. I'm simply going to just cut off a piece that's going to fit over my sanding sponge. This is a pretty hard sanding sponge. It doesn't give a lot of bend. You don't want a super soft one. You don't want to be bending around these edges. These edges are very dangerous. We don't want to just get all that clear coat that we worked so hard for off of it. So I'm just going to drop that in there for a couple seconds. All right, we are back. It is time to start sanding this. So what I'm going to do first is take some of the soapy water and just with my fingertips here, I'm just going to put a little on and just get this quarter of the guitar wet. See, I'm kind of doing this in a section. I'm not going to try to sand this entire guitar all at once, unless it starts going super smoothly, but we won't know if that's going to happen yet. Got that water on. I'm going to grab my sandpaper. Put it on my sponge. And now we are going to lightly, letting the sandpaper do the work, sand this section off. Can you see this white stuff right here? This is the finish coming off. This is good. We're going up to the edge, but not on the edge. Because we don't want to sand through the edge there. And we got this quarter done. You can start to feel how much smoother it is while you're sanding. And you'll notice I am not pushing. I'm letting the sandpaper do all the work. So all this white here is just the finish coming off. I'm gonna grab a towel. 
and I'm going to wipe this off. You're going to see that our finish is starting to become smooth. Now this is very normal. We actually have um, these dark spots where you don't see the white. That's where the finish is not touched by the sandpaper yet. So we almost got through all the orange peel right here, but we didn't quite get through it all through here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're just going to keep sanding that. We're going to wipe it down and we're going to check it again. All of the dark stuff that is not white again is stuff that the sandpaper has not touched yet. Okay, we're not taking off a lot. It's very, very little, very little. But this actually feels quite smooth already. We're going to go ahead and hit this again with wet sandpaper. Some water on there. And you can see that white stuff kind of goes away the minute it gets wet. We're going to buff this. We're going to clean this up. It's not going to look white like that when we're finished. So if you're a little worried about that, don't be. Make sure your sandpaper is wet. I did dip mine again. And we're going to keep sanding. All right, when we start to get kind of this dry paste, that means we don't have enough water on the guitar at this point. So we're going to go ahead and wipe this down again. All right, so this is a lot closer to the finish that we want. You see how we kind of stayed away from this edge. Edges are scary right now. Okay, stayed away from the edge, but compared to the first pass, first pass looked like this, right? It was very bumpy. We had a lot of the dark coming through. This pass, we don't have much dark coming through anymore. This is a very good sign. So we're going to move on from our thousand grit on this area. We don't want to keep taking off big chunks. So I'm just going to keep doing this on the whole guitar. Before I go any further, I do want to point out I'm not touching this beveled edge yet, okay? Beveled edges we're not going to do with our blocks. In fact, we're going to stay away from them. Especially on this edge here, anything with an edge or a bend is going to have a really easy time getting through that finish. We want to take our time on those spots. We're going to be very careful. We're going to do those by hand. All right, so we've sped that sanding up. That was about four or five minutes of sanding. This is looking pretty good. We got a rough spot here, a rough spot here where you can see I'm scared to hit the edges. That's all okay. We're gonna move up to 1200 grit now. Get our surface wet and lubricated. Damn paper's been soaking for a minute. Now we're gonna pull it out. It's also very important that you are using wet, dry sandpaper. It's going to have a waxy backing that's gonna allow it to not break up when you put it in water. You'll pretty much know if you're not using wet sandpaper because that's not gonna last very long. So I spent about two minutes on this. This is what we're trying to look for. Uh, you can see again here, I'm kind of scared of this edge. I'm staying away from it. That's okay. I'm going to have to touch these edges now very soon. This is where we started. You see how awesome this is. This is that just boring matte finish. I promise this will go away. This is what it should look like, okay? This is our 1,200 after two minutes. We started with our 1,000. I'm going to do the 1200 again. I'm going to move up to 1500 and then I'll probably move to the 2000. We'll also start taking care of this and we'll keep going from there. What you're seeing me do right now is uh, dry the area to see where my spots are and to see where I need to add more attention. So I can see right here, I need to add a little bit more attention. 
what I do is I just apply a little water to the spots I want to sand on, right there, right there. And now I know where to put my sandpaper. So a big boring matte finish is actually what we're going for. You can see we still have some dots here. This is okay because I'm only done with my 1200 right now. All right, but what I want to do is I want to take a break. I'm going to show you how to do this beveled edge next. Our most important thing on the beveled edge is to try to stay away from this corner here and here. When I say corner, I mean where the wood is changing angles. This is going to be our weakest point and our thinnest point for our finish. This is a part where we do stuff by hand and we move very quickly, very, very quickly. So I just cut some 1200. I'd notice how I'm starting in a higher grade on the corner than I would on the edge. You might wanna even do 1500. Less is more in this situation because if we go through the finish here, we're probably gonna go through the paint and that means we have to start doing repairs or you're even sanding the whole thing down doing this all over again. We don't wanna to have to do that. And get this edge a little wet. I am barely going to apply pressure here, barely. I'm taking my two fingers and I'm just trying to get not much time on this at all. Not much time at all. I'm not touching the edges. Not touching the edges, not touching the edges. Staying away from that edge. Now these bigger surface areas right here where I know I'm confident that I'm not on the corner here, the edge. I can spend a little more time in. Now we're gonna notice that that didn't do much. We have a lot more to do there, a lot more. But we need to go a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. You can see it's dark on this edge. We're gonna keep it dark on this edge. The buffer will take care of what we needed to take care of on this edge. Do not go along here or you will go through it. It's so scary. Sandpaper wet. We'll go round two, taking our time, right? Now, I'm going to stop here because if this is your first guitar, even though this finish isn't gonna be the most smooth, polished finish in the world, we're not going through it, which is the biggest thing when you're doing a new guitar. If you've never put a finish on a guitar before, it was so much work getting up to here, it's not worth risking for a slightly smoother finish, okay? If you are doing this for a customer and you need to give them their best available product, you absolutely need to go further than this. We, uh, we got some buffing to do now. So normally what I do is I use a Stumac buffer. My Stumac buffer I have in a different room. There's no camera set up there. I'm just here by myself recording, so I don't have anybody to hold a camera. I'm not going to set up a whole tripod. Plus, you probably don't have a buffer wheel this big, two-sided doing all that. So you probably are going to use what I'm about to show you. Here we are. This is a dual action polisher usually used for cars. Uh, comes with different heads. This red one is actually the super soft one because the last time I used it, I buffed out just a really fine area with really super fine polish. But this is the tool that I use when I'm not busting out my big, huge Stumac buffer. I also want to point out, normally I wouldn't buff this without doing the whole thing first. I have time to make this video for you guys if I'm going to do it. I, now I have to do it this way. <laughs> I'm going to have to worry about sanding the uh, rest of the guitar later. I'll tell you right now, though, if you, you sand one side, you buff it, you flip it over, you sand a bunch, and then you buff that side, you're going to have to rebuff this side some again because we're just going to put finish marks in it and stuff just by moving it around and buffing it and stuff like that. So I'm going to do this side with you guys with this buffer. But make sure you're staining the whole guitar and then you're doing it. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the higher end tools that I use to do the rest of the guitar. And then I'm going to buff it on my big Stumac buffer. But you'll be able to see you get a really nice finish with just something like this. I'll be right back to show you the tools that I use. All right. So I'm going to use our Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Professional Ultra Cut Compound. For this buffer, the yellow one is going to be a little harder of a pad. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on. I like to use soapy water for this stuff too. And then I get parts of the guitar wet. 
Now again, we're not going to want to do the whole guitar all at once. We're going to do it in sections again. So if I move this stuff out of the way, we'll get the corner of the guitar wet right here. After we get done doing the whole back, well, technically we do the whole back of the guitar with a heavy cut, we're going to move to our mirror glaze, which is our fine cut. And then after that, I move to a clean finish polishing compound. This I do by hand. So. Let's get started on this guy. I'll show you the top down. As you can see, we have a quarter of our guitar here. I'm going to take this compound. I'm going to shake this up. Put a little on here. I'm going to move this around. Now we want to move pretty quickly. We don't want this stuff to dry up. You'll see I have also put it on the sponge here. And I'm going to move this around on the buffing sponge also. Now this compound probably will fling around. If you have stuff on your bench that you don't want to get full of it, definitely don't do it. Start low and go from there. Welcome back. Now, I just got done buffing this. Um, I am not going to wipe this immediately. The finish is probably warm. I'm actually going to let this cool down for about 30, 45 seconds before I start wiping it down. Now, I'm just taking some of my warm soapy water. I'm using a very high-end microfiber cloth. These are actually medical grade, technically. Um, and now I'm just going to wipe away the part where we were buffing. We want to get all that compound off of that corner because we want to see how well the buff went. Wipe it off. Take another side, we're gonna dry this up. This is our difference so far. And I don't, I don't think the camera's picking it up. There are some scratches and stuff in here, but that's okay. That's not for this portion to get out. The light scratching that you're gonna see after you get done buffing that is for the fine compound. But now that we have this as a nice, smooth finish, we're going to keep going on more parts of the guitar. All right, so I was buffing that for about three or four minutes. The compound started getting really dry. I stopped. Um, it's probably going to need a little more buffing, but we don't want to buff with a dry compound. It's going to just wear down that finish too quickly. You'll see I was a little less lenient on the edges now because we didn't sand on them, so we can buff on them. But again, we're going to wait a little bit to, before we wipe this down, about 30 seconds to a minute. You really start to see that the shine's starting to come through. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep buffing more with the same compound in the same area. We're going to do this half of the guitar now. There's too many spots that are untouched yet, right? So if we talk about our dull spots and then our dark shiny spots, we had too many dark shiny spots still. Now that's really normal. Again, we didn't do a bunch of sanding with this guitar. I went up to 2000 grit with it. We started at a thousand. Um, I didn't take a ton of time doing those grits. This is just overkill on compound, so I'm going to wipe some of that off with my hand. So that's two buffs with a heavy compound. You can see we're starting to get that shine. You can start to even see me in it. Um, this is a really good shine that we got going on so far. It's nice and smooth feeling. This is just the heavy compound. 
So you can tell we've gone up to about here. We're just gonna keep going. Not bad for spray cans and car buffers, huh? Let's move on to the next one. All right, our next is our Mirror Glaze Meguiar's. I'm using a much softer sponge. This one is not gonna be nearly as focused. This is the front, we didn't do any buffing on it. On the back we did sanding from 1,000 to 2,000, roughly two times each grit. Then we buffed twice with the ultra cut compound, we buffed twice with the fine cut compound, and then we buffed once with a polishing compound, which I forgot to record and I apologize. I will show you what I did right after I show you this. So this is the front, this is before. Now here's our back. Look at that gloss. Look at that shine. How you see everything in that. And you see how messy my store is in the reflection. <laughs> that is what we're looking for. So, really smooth finish. Is it flawless? No, it is so tough to get flawless when we're using these hand tools and stuff like that. So, so tough. Don't beat yourself up. There are little spots in here. I can see them when I get really close. It's okay. For that polishing fine cleaning that I told you about, I do it with this turtle wax. This is all it is. The turtle wax here. And I take a microfiber buffer, a hand one. It has to be an ultra fine one. Um, the way they package these is not very clever. They put the little plastic clips in it and have cardboard to it. Make sure there is nothing in here. All right, we just take some of this compound, put it on a sponge, and it's just wax on, wax off. By hand, in sections. And I just keep doing this until you can't see the compound anymore. Hey, if you're having fun on this channel, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You have no idea how much that helps. My goal is to keep this channel alive for the rest of my life. I absolutely love doing this. I love your comments. I love your feedback. Please let me know what you want to see. Please let me know what you like seeing. Even if there's stuff you didn't see, let me know so I stop doing those things. Until then, can't wait to see you again.